How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I'm a second year medical student currently studying in Canada and we are finally getting around to do today's topic for the video because for the last eight or nine months now one of the most frequent questions that I've had is to put together some sort of guide looking at some statistics and just the process for internationally trained students and physicians who are looking to come and work as doctors here in Canada. So after trying to do as much research as I possibly could on the topic that is exactly what we're going to be doing in today's video. We're going to be taking a very high level approach to this topic and going over the requirements for anyone who's looking to come to Canada and work as a doctor. Also the process of how you go about applying and the different steps that are involved with the journey to actually start working as a doctor. And then finally, the statistics regarding the CARMS match for international medical students. Now, before we go ahead and start with today's video, I just want to say that all of the information that we're going to be going over here today is freely available online and I get it. It's hard to find if you don't know exactly where to look. So I'm going to go ahead and link everything directly in the description below when you guys are going through your own applications make sure that you consult directly with the official information rather than just taking this video but this will be a very high level how to start the approach so to start off we'll go over the different requirements for anyone looking to become a fully licensed physician here in Canada and all of this information is going to be found on the Medical Council of Canada's official website called physiciansapply.ca that is their official website so the first thing that you're gonna need is a medical degree and they won't just accept any medical degrees you need to make sure that your medical degree comes from a school identified in the World Directory of Medical Schools. You could also use a Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degree down from a U.S. institution. As just a reference, we don't have any osteopathic medical schools here in Canada, but they will accept the ones down from the States. Or then finally, you could have a typical medical degree from a Canadian or U.S. medical school that is accredited. Uh, all 17 institutions here in Canada are accredited and most of the ones down in the States, the allopathic ones, are also accepted. The other requirements is that you need to be a licentiate of the Medical Council Council of Canada, meaning that you need to pass both the MCC1 exam and the MCC2 exam. You also need to complete 12 months of clinical medicine training. Then after that, you have to go ahead and complete a discipline specific residency training. And then finally, you need to be certified by one of the different medical governing bodies here in Canada. Now, I think it's also really important for me to say that if you have all of these things done already and you're in the process of trying to come into Canada, or maybe you're not at that step yet, but you're starting to get some of these different things checked off, you want to book the MCC exams and figure out how all that works. What you need to do is sign up for a Physicians Apply actual account and just follow the steps that they have all laid out. They have it laid out in a sequential order, what to submit next, you give your documents directly to them and they act as the central information hub in bringing your documents safely from one institution to the other in terms of applying. Now there's also a few other exams that you're going to have to write including the NAC exam which I'm told from other students is probably one of the most important tests regarding international students looking to practice in Canada and Physicians Apply is going to go ahead and explain when and where to write all of these different things. Next, let's take a look at the general overview for the process on how to go from completing international training to working back as a doctor here in Canada. And basically there are two different methods. Number one is the postgraduate training method. And then the other one is the practice ready method. The postgraduate training method is doing a Canadian residency program. And the practice ready method is for doctors that have already been working in another country, but are just looking to now immigrating to Canada. Basically, if you're gonna do the postgraduate training route, you would start off by doing a pre-med, post-secondary education, and then you would apply to medical school in whichever country that is. If it's one of the Caribbean schools, or if it's somewhere in Europe or Australia, wherever it is that you're coming from, then you would complete your medical program, which would last three to five years. And then after that, you would have to do a source verification of your credentials, as well as complete a test to obtain proof of language proficiency. The next step is to pass the MCC1 exam. And then from there, you'd be ready to apply for a postgraduate or basically your Canadian residency program. Now here it says that it's optional to complete an assessment program that could help with your application. But other than that, you're going to be applying for your postgraduate training position or enter directly via an assessment program. The assessment program method is only available at certain in school so if you are interested in one school or the other you're gonna have to check directly with whatever school it is that you're applying to once you're accepted to a residency program though you're gonna complete the residency training program which here in Canada will last anywhere from between two and seven years for the first residency position excluding fellowship at this point and that's gonna depend on whatever specialty you're doing and during this period of time you're also gonna have to obtain your educational license to practice as a medical resident now after your residency though you have to pass the MCC qualifying exam number two and then additional exams to obtain 
obtain your certification in one of the different medical governing bodies here in Canada. Now, once you've done all the exams and you've done your residency and you've actually set up where it is that you're going to be practicing, you need to register with the provincial regulatory authority to practice medicine independently here in Canada. But then at that point, you are a doctor. The last step though, is to maintain your certification as a doctor by fulfilling the continuing professional development requirements for as long as you practice. Now, on the other hand, if you've already been working as a fully licensed physician in another country and now you are just looking to come here to Canada, it is going to be a little bit harder for me to comment on it. Number one, because I'm not at that stage in my training yet myself. And number two, because, well, I'll put the, the actual flowchart from the AFMC back on the screen, but I do know personally some physicians who were, for example, neurosurgeons in other countries who have then come to Canada and were not able to simply just keep working as neurosurgeons. They had to go back and complete an additional residency program. And that meant that for the ones that I know anyways, possibly even switching their specialty from something like neurosurgery to one of the residency programs that takes a little bit less time. Uh, and I think that's all going to depend on the country of which you actually did your training in and what your own goals are. If you're looking to actually go back and do an additional seven year residency, or if you just want to go ahead and do another residency program that wasn't as long. So individual circumstances are going to vary. But again, I will put the actual screenshot back up on the screen and you guys can go ahead and check out the document yourself. But now finally, we'll get into the current statistics regarding the match rates for international medical students that are looking to come to Canada to do their postgraduate training, their residency program here. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Canadian residency matching system is actually broken down into two different iterations. There's the first iteration and the second iteration. And when you look at the first iteration of the match, out of the 163 uh, international medical graduates that applied, there were current year graduates, approximately 61.3% of them actually matched. But when you look at the previous year graduates, out of the more than 1,000 applicants that applied to the match, only 257 of them actually matched, which was about 24%. Another factor that you need to take into consideration though, was the specialty that these students ended up matching into. And when you look at that data too, and thankfully all of this data is posted on the CARM's website, you'll see that there were a lot more spots that were open for international medical students in specialties like family medicine, for example, and then also internal medicine. On the other hand, if you were an international medical graduate trying to match into a plastic surgery residency here in Canada, there was only one spot out of every single applicant that applied, one spot in the entire country. And this wasn't only limited to plastic surgery. I think ophthalmology, for example, also had one spot available in the entire country. And that's a lot better than programs like radiation oncology that had zero spots for international medical students in the entire country. So here you'll see that one of the roadblocks for international medical students, and definitely this applies to some people that I've actually talked to in person, is the specialty of choice. If it's not possible for someone to match into a specialty that they want to do, it's a big choice to just switch to a different medical specialty that they really didn't want just because there were open spots available for them. And then finally, one of the most interesting things when you look at this last statistic is that when you look at the match data for 2020, you could actually see this in the amount of people that matched. So in total, when you look at the first and second iterations of the match, there were somewhere around 1200 people that applied as international medical graduates. But when you look at the first match and the second match, there are statistically some people from the first match that didn't go on to apply again in the second iteration of the match, and this could be for a variety of different reasons. Either they got accepted to a residency program somewhere else, like down in the States, or they chose not to apply to the second iteration of the match because they couldn't get the specialty that they wanted to do. And it's for that reason that when I'm asked by pre-meds, for example, if they should go down to study in the Caribbean or another medical school that is outside of Canada, and they do plan to come back to Canada at some point, I often tell them that they should avoid it at all costs if that's possible. And there's a few other reasons for that too. We, we often get into talking about just how crazy expensive it is for a Canadian student to go down and study at one of the Caribbean programs, just as an example. But in addition, if you are thinking about getting into one of the more extremely competitive surgical specialties, for example, it's going to be really, really difficult. Now, I'm not saying that it's totally impossible, unless we're talking about one of the specialties that offers zero spots for international students at all, because then it's physically impossible. But other than that, out of all of the international medical students that I know, Canadian students that went down to the international programs and then came back, they had to absolutely bust their butt off and work really, really hard to outperform everyone else when it came to the actual residency interviews and all of their test scores and everything like that. But yeah, that is gonna be the entire video today. That is everything that I was able to find currently on information regarding international students trying to come and practice as medical doctors here in Canada. I hope you guys were able to learn something today. And once again, everything is gonna be linked down in the description below. If you have any questions or comments about 
about anything that was said in the video today, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I tried my best to look up as much as I could. If anyone knows a little bit more about certain things that I touched on or want to share a little bit more of the detailed process regarding international medical students looking to come back to Canada to practice, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below because I know it's going to be really, really helpful for other students as well. But other than that, guys, thanks so much for stopping by for today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope it was insightful. We'll see you all in the next one. Everyone take care.